Hey guys, Matt from Iron Trap Garage, and today we're gonna do a quick little kind of tech tip type video. You guys know I've been working on this uh, Roadster, doing some uh, metal repair, rust repair for Aaron. This car uh, had been moved and abused and poorly report, repaired over the years, and we're kind of working on the fly with uh, damaged metal, uh, poor repairs like I mentioned, and a body that's kind of tweaked a little bit from being moved around without proper bracing um, off the frame. Uh, one of the other things I've been struggling with or, or fighting with a little bit is the patch panels that we got for the car uh, are all obviously replacement patch panels and I've been trying to in these series of videos show you guys what it requires to get these patch panels to work. Uh, a lot of times when I see cars at shows or different places um, that have been patched up, even nice restored cars, you can really quickly tell that they use patch panels that didn't match up with the original car very well. So I'm trying to show some tech tips for trying to make it at least a little bit better uh, so the stuff lines up just a little bit better. This car isn't going to be any kind of show car, but Aaron also wants it to be decent so that the body lines aren't as bad as like this we're looking at right here. So. This patch we covered in a different video on the other side. I showed you guys a way to accomplish that um, by kind of sh moving the panel around. This panel, when I tried to move it around, unfortunately, they're different. Every, every single patch panel, they end up being a little different. This one, uh, if we slid the, um, the patch back anymore to get this body line right here to line up in the wheel arch, uh, we had like a crazy huge gap at the door here. Now there's a little bit of a gap between the bead where the bead stops on the door. There's a little flat area and then the bead starts again. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap right there and that's how the other side is. Um, so we're trying to sort of match that. But what I found was the way this radius was made right here with the bead was different on this uh, particular panel and uh, I couldn't get it to line up. So if I move the panel um, forward or back more to get this body line to sort of line up. Obviously the bead's wider so it was going to overhang which we in the last video we showed you we cut that and moved it forward but then what happened is we had a huge gap here. We had like a I don't know like a two inch gap or something crazy and I don't have a good way to like remake that bead uh, because the panel's already kind of made so without me making a whole new panel I'm trying to work with this. So I think what is the lesser of two evils here is I'm going to do a, a little surgery and I already have this panel welded in here. Uh, I roughed it out. It's pretty good. You know, again, a little coat of filler and it's, it's fine, but we got it looking good. The panel's in shape. There's no major bellies or anything real crazy in it. Um, what I can do now is I didn't weld this last little bit here. I stopped right in here and I make a little mark with my marker, which I'm wiping off and I think I'm going to cut pretty close to this body on here. And then we're going to cut right through the center of the radius of the bead. The reason I'm doing that is we can cut this and just barely open it up to change the radius so that it will line up with this wheel arch. And it'll be such a subtle little change that I don't think it'll be noticeable when the car is all done. Otherwise, I'd have to cut a whole piece out, move it over, and then we'd be getting into like trying to reshape this bead here and it would be very difficult. So I'm gonna show you guys the process for just doing a quick little surgery like this. This is common for almost every patch panel when you do these old cars. You have to do some kind of modification. Otherwise, you have beads like this that just don't match and they look very poor when the car's done. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna try and cut this with the uh, body saw. I learned a cool little trick or saw a cool little trick on Instagram and, uh, and Facebook from Dave Havler of Havler House of Fabrication. Big shout out to Dave. Uh, he put a little tip that he cuts up hacksaw blades and turns them into body saw blades, which is awesome. They don't uh, break as easy. And uh, if you're like me, you probably picked them up at yard sales and auctions. I have probably like 200 of them in the old, um, the old like grease coatings uh, from like the 40s or something. Now you only use one a year or something. So I started cutting these up like Dave suggested. And uh, because we want to kind of get in here and make a little curved cut, uh, you can cut the back side of it to make it like a, um, like a body saw blade using your tin snips. And then you can cut a curve a little bit easier. So I'm going to trim that off and we'll, uh, and we'll give it a little cut here. We should be able to get in here and make a little cut.
All right, so I got this piece cut here. I did a little hammer and dolly work just to knock this edge that wasn't welded. It started flopping around when we cut it. Hardest part was I had to make this really sharp curve down uh, to get this to cut, uh, and that was a little bit of a difficulty. So what I did was I opened it up. You can see I closed it back up here, and you can see how far the gap was off where the body line was off. So by doing this and cutting not all the way through, but, but right to the corner, it kind of lets us just move this bead around and we can get the shape right there to match. And then we'll have to make a little sliver um, in this larger section here to fill that. And I could probably fill it with a larger filler rod in, down in here. But what we wanna do is try and get this crevice of the bead to line up right there. So I'm gonna try and get this thing clamped so that that holds in place. Then I could put like two tacks or even weld the whole face of the bead and once we have that in place, then I can work on welding the rest of this up, and then we'll finally go back to the back of this, and I'll either hammer and dolly the, the edge over, or I'll put another little cut along the edge and fold that in and, and grind off the excess like we did with the other one. Uh, but this is how we're tackling this one, and it should, should work out pretty good once we weld this. This little corner, you'll, it'll disappear once I do a little TIG weld in there, and we'll really never know. So what I'm doing here is bridging a gap. I actually have 3 16 rod, which is, you know, 100% of the time too much to weld a weld seam. But with something like this, I like to use it to bridge the gap. Uh, what I'm doing is I have the amperage turned up higher and I actually set it across like this. And I start the arc basically right on my filler rod. And on my machine, I have it set up to where I let off, I hold the trigger down, it gets me at 10 amps when I let off. It goes up to, I think I have it like 38 amps. And then when I see the, the rod melt and start to flow into the, into the weld seam, as soon as I see it start to flatten out, I let off and uh, drop the amperage back down. It flows into this and at least gets this thing tacked in place so we can keep it under control and work on filling the rest up. We'll heat it up, let a blob just start to melt and then let off. Really quick, you gotta be, you gotta, your reaction time has to be pretty good because if you wait a split second, like the one down here, I waited a split second too long, it starts to open up a keyhole, keyway or keyhole on it, and that's not good. So I'm gonna keep working on this little seam here, but we got the top blended in, um, looking pretty good, and the rest of it we just gotta kinda 
Uh, just keep filling in and working our way around it, and then we can work in this back area and make it all pretty much disappear. All right, so I got the panel all welded. You can see I got uh, everything matching and flowing pretty good. And uh, the thing we need to address now is just right here. Obviously the bead is wider than the factory one. So before I can finish weld and add this little patch that we need to add in to finish everything up, uh, we gotta move this edge over. So what we're doing is we have a dolly shoved in the corner from the backside in the original bead. And it's gonna overlap right here into the, the new metal and I'm gonna hammer right like this here and actually push this folded edge over a little bit and that will get us to you know blend everything in so it'll go a little more naturally so we're going to hammer this edge probably down to here and then it'll kind of go back with what the original panel was so just make everything flow so uh, grab the hammer and some strategic hits be on our way all right so Are you ready and let's now move it down just a little bit. Yep. Perfect. That's it. Just like that. Boom. Perfect. Yeah. It just flows right into each other and it's like it never happened. <laughs> All right, so as you saw in that last shot, we got the, the, the radius here on the, uh, the flange side all hammered and in place. 
looking pretty good. If we blended basically the wider bead flange uh, into the original stuff so that it looks natural and it's it's nice and I'm pretty happy with everything. Now we do have a hole here that we need to fill that was some rot that this patch panel and the wheel well didn't cover. So we'll do that uh, off camera just to button everything up. But this patch is basically done and uh, just needs a little bit of filler work to make it like perfect. But uh, it is more than acceptable for this car. Hopefully this video helped you guys know what you're in for when you're doing these pre-made patch panels. Every single time I get one of these, I need to modify something. So expect to do that. At least if you watch some of these videos and you know the tips and tricks, you won't be as scared when you come to those points, you know what you're in for, and you know a way, at least my way, that I fix these. There's a hundred ways, but this is the way that I did it. Thank you guys for watching. As always, we do videos Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Drop us a comment down below. What do you think of the patch panel? Thanks guys. Catch you later.